Okay, so uh, our last speaker of this session in this morning is Professor Olivoni uh, de Queiroz from Unicamp, and he's going to talk about geometric and regular estimates for nonlinear, non-local elliptic problems. Thank you, Olivoni. Okay. Thank you, Eduardo. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation, Eduardo and Boyan. Uh, it's really a great pleasure for me to stay here and to talk about my research since my this is a research that I'm studying since my postdoc, okay? Uh, and as Eduardo told, I'm going to talk about regularity estimates for some geometric equations. Actually, it's a kind of, uh, we can say that it's geometric regularity estimates, okay? Uh, the talk will be divided in two parts, uh, at least in two parts. I'm going to talk first about the regularity for uh, free boundary problem, okay? And after that, I'm going to talk, if I have time, about a partial regularity result for a, a geometric equation, okay? Uh, both of these equations are related with the fractional Laplacian, okay? And they are both connected by a monotonistic formula that we proved for the fractional Laplacian in the spirit of Georg Weiss, okay? Uh, as I told, the model operator that I'm going to talk about is the fractional Laplacian. Uh, and I'm going to define the fractional Laplacian. It is a, you can see the fractional Laplacian as, a, as an infinitesimal generator of a Levy process, or, okay, it's a pseudo differential operator with this symbol, and is given by this formula here, okay? Uh, but recently, there is a very nice result by Caffarella and Silvestri that proved that you can localize the fractional Laplacian as this limit here once you have solved this problem on Rn plus one in the upper half space, okay? This we can, you can also see in the paper by Cabri and Sir, there is a very nice survey by by Cabri and Sear that treat the same problem. Uh, this is nice because I would like to consider regularity estimates for functions, for equations that is driven by the fractional Laplacian, which is a non-local operator, so I want to have some kind of information, some local information for the solution of the equation that has a uh, non-local diffusion, so it's, uh, but with this result here, I can localize, so the problem will be to study a degenerate equation with Neumann boundary condition, okay? And also this can, in some case, we can see that this is a, you have a variation of formulation for this, for this equation here. Okay, let me start, for, let me talk first about the free boundary problem, okay? Uh, and let me start with this functional here, which is called, the, I'm calling this out and Caffarelli functional, which is related with some cavity problem from fluid dynamics. And in the classical paper by out and Caffarelli, they studied the minimize regularity for the minimizers of this functional and regularity of the free boundary of the minimizer. And also related with my problem is this functional here, which is the functional that give rise to the obstacle, to solutions of the obstacle problem, okay? But I'm going to consider something that is related with this functional here, okay? You see that if you put beta equals to zero here, we recover the out and Caffarelli functional, and if you could put beta equals to one, then you recover the obstacle problem. So we have a class of functionals that is between the cavity problem and the obstacle problem, okay? Once you have regularity for this problem here, maybe you can recover regularity for these two problems. These two problems are very important in the theory of free boundary problems, okay? Uh, but I would like to consider, okay, let me say that these two problems here, the cavity problem and the obstacle problem, 
was also considered in the fractional setting by the first one by Caffarelli, Hocke Joffre, and Sir, Yannick Sir, and the second one by Caffarelli, Salsa, and Silvestre. Okay, I would like to consider this functional here in the fractional setting. Okay, actually, this was my, I would. This was my first, uh, I started to study this problem in 2010, but then I, decided, I realized that Ray Young was finishing his PhD, solving the same problem, so I decided, I decided to talk with him and study uh, the regularity of the free boundary together. Okay, so, as I told, in some sense, we can recover this true problem by studying this problem minimizer for this function here, for this functional here, and this was done by, together with Marcelo Montenegro and Eduardo Teixeira. Okay, in, not for the fractional setting, but this for the, for the Laplacian setting, okay. Uh, so, I am interested in the problem for the fractional Laplacian, okay. And since I have the extension result by Caffarelli and Silvestri, it seems reasonable to consider this functional here, okay? Now I have the energy, I have the energy in this, okay, the energy is, here is computed in, I have here, there. Plus n plus one. This 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 part of the this energy here is computed on the upper half space, and this is on the boundary. Okay, so uh, heuristically, what you can see is that uh, this sec this second term here. You have the energy here, and this second term is here. First is the, the non-zero. Okay, you have the energy that penalizes the non-zero values of U. Okay, then you have that if you start, for instance, with some positive value here, in some point here, then the solution will, if we start with a positive value here, then the solution, the that part of the energy forces the solution to become zero inside. And this is the free boundary that I'm calling. Okay? So I would like to study regularity proper properties of minimizer for this functional. Okay. At first, the regularity of the minimizer was proved by Ray Young from Kuhan in his thesis, and he showed that the solution is C, C alpha for this alpha here in the neighborhood of, the free, of a free boundary problem, okay? And this regularity here is sharp since you can prove that the sup of U is bigger than or equal to R to some power, uh, to the same power R alpha for some constant C that does not depend on U. Okay, if you take the soup over balls centered in free boundary points. Okay, so this here, this estimate here says that this regularity is sharp. Okay, you, have, you can construct also a, a local solution for this problem that does not have a better regularity than this one. Regularity. Okay, but uh, so we have the regularity for the, for the minimizers, and I would like to prove regularity for the free boundary, not just for the minimizer. This is the first step. The first step was proved by Ray Young, and now I, me and Ray Young, we are working on the regularity for the free boundary. And the first step that we did is a monotonistic formula for minimizers of this functional here, okay. So let me talk a little bit about the monotonistic formula. And we can start with the Almergren monotonistic formula, which is a very classical one. And it's the following. If you define this quantity here, 
with this energy and this quantity centered, centered in on the boundary, then you have that this function here is a monotonous increasing function of R. And it's very impor important also to note that this, when you take the limit as R goes to zero, then the value of this limit is the vanishing order of U at zero. Okay. Uh, we did the same, uh, uh, we proved a uh, similar monotonicity formula for minimizer of that functional. And the point is that when you take the limit here, the vanishing order of U is exactly the, is, is, is related with the sharp regularity of the minimizers. Okay. So actually this is another way to prove that that estimate is the sharp regular is the sharp for the is sharp for the regularity okay uh, so this is the monotonicity formula for harmonic functions we would like to prove a similar formula for the minimizers of that functional for the laplacian case this formula was proved by georg weiss and we was able to prove a similar formula for the fractional setting, okay? And the formula is the following. Okay, for simplicity here, I'm going to take gamma equals to, gamma equals to one half, okay? Uh, the monotonicity formula is the following. If you take this function here, now I have this extra term, which is this one, which is related with the reaction term. And if you take balls centered on the free, on free boundary points, then this function here is increasing and you have exactly this derivative here. Okay, you can compute the derivative of this function and you can prove that this function is increasing. Okay, this is exactly the same as the result by Omegreen for harmonic functions. Uh, and this, this, this monotonicity formula is very important in the study, study of the regularity of the free boundary, especially when you have some kind of singularity, okay? But uh, at first I'm going to talk about just on the regular part of the free boundary. So let me talk a, li a little bit about some consequence. Uh, oh, let, let me say also that I'm, going, I'm not going to give some proofs Okay, I'm just give some ideas. I'm not going to prove anything here. Uh, <coughs> so, some consequences of the, of the monotonicity formula. You have, if you have monoto, okay, with the monotonicity formula, you can prove that you have existence of blow up limits for a minimizer. This means that you can, if you take this scaling here with alpha, exactly the same as the one in the sharp regularity result, then you have that this function here, u lambda, you can take a subsequence here of lambda, and this function here converges to xn to the power alpha, okay? Let me say here that xn, I'm, I'm using the notation xn, y for a point on Rn plus one, okay? So you have that the, you can characterize blow up limits of the minimizers for the functional and this, and this can happen for this sequence here at points of the free boundary where the free boundary is not too thin, okay? This, this too thin here is something that is very technical, but it means that you can actually divide the free boundary as a positive part in the part where the solution is zero, okay? This is related with the work by Caffarelli at the beginnings of the 18th. Okay, so if the Using the monotonicity formula, you can prove that 
if the free boundary is not too thin, then the solution, the blow up limit is, behaves like this function here. It's, this is a kind of polynomial of the homogeneity alpha, okay? Homogeneous of degree alpha. Uh, and the consequence of this, the existence of this homogeneous blow up is the following. You have the first regularity result for the free boundary. Suppose that A is a point on the free boundary and that the free boundary is not too thin close to A. Okay, take a X0 as a point where you have U of X0 bigger, strict, strictly bigger than zero and, and, and take this function here this function eight here. E is a vector, okay, that is fixed. And, okay, if you take that, if you see that U lambda behaves like this function here, then you can do some computation that is not so, so easy at first, but you can, use, you can take this function eight here, try to see what kind of equation this function satisfies. Okay, this is a kind of Bernstein type technique. And then you are going to, if you, up, if you take this function here, compute the equation that this function satisfies, use the maximum principle, then you are going to see that this function eight at the point x zero is strictly bigger than zero. Okay, this is a kind of, this is a sort of computation that I'm go not going to show you but it's, uh, it's very classical in regularity theory. Uh, well, if this function actually, actually this function at x zero is strictly bigger than zero, if you, if you have that E with, okay, you have to, ha you need to have some angle between E and En, okay? Essentially, what I'm saying is that Let's suppose that you have uh, here the free boundary. U is positive here. U is equal to zero here. Then you take one point here, A, at the free boundary. You, consider, you can consider a ball here in, with centering A. And then you can do a change of coordinate and suppose that En is exactly this vector here. And you see that with Bernstein type technique, you see that this function here is strictly positive at some point, at actually every point x0, which is close enough to A. Okay, if this function is strictly positive, then you have that the inner product of E with gradient of U lambda at x zero is strictly positive than, is strictly bigger than U lambda of x zero. And this I know that is strictly positive. And then what you see is that if you have a vector E, that when you compute the inner product with En, it is the, the inner product is bigger than or equal to one half, then this is strictly positive, okay? This means that you can, if you fix a point here and take x0 here, then you lambda at x0 and this gradient here is strictly positive, okay? This means that the, the free boundary cannot go inside this cone here, okay? This means that the free boundary cannot go inside this cone. Well, well, if you have this, then you see that the free boundary cannot be something like, at this point, it cannot be something like this, okay? And then this means that the free boundary locally 
is a Lipschitz graph, Lipschitz graph of a function of some function. Okay, so if you have monotonicity formula, you have classification of the blow-up limits, and class classification of the blow-up limits uh, implies that the free boundary is locally a Lipschitz graph. Okay, this is just a sketch of the proof that. Uh, this argument here, uh, uh, me and Ray Young, we learned it from Feng Hualin some months ago. But now, the point is that once we have Lipschitz, that the free boundary is a Lipschitz function, it should be a very nice result if we prove that Lipschitz graphs are C1 alpha, okay? But this is not so easy, okay? Actually, this was done for the Laplacian by the theory by, developed by Caffarelli, but for the fractional Laplacian, this is a theory developed by Daniela De Silva and Jean-Michel Roque-Joffre, which is based on the, a very nice Harnack type inequality developed by Ovidio Savin, okay? But until now, we was not able to prove to adapt the result by Daniela De Silva and Jean-Michel Roque-Joffre to our case, okay? The work by Daniela De Silva and Roque-Joffre was done by the, for the cavity, for the fractional cavity problem, okay? We need to adapt to, the, to our case. This is a work in progress with Ray Young. And also, if you have monotonicity formula, it should be interesting to study the part of the free boundary that you have this kind of points here, okay? The part of the free boundary that has singularity. Okay, but uh, for the Laplacian, this is something that was done by Weiss using the monotonicity, the monotonicity formula. But for the fractional Laplacian, we need some more geometric measure theory. And there are some people who believe that the machinery that you use from geometric measure theory to study, to study this kind of problem in the fractional setting is still under development, okay? You need to develop the machinery from geometric measure theory that, you, that is necessary to the study of this problem. There are some people who believe that this is somehow related with the non-local minimal surfaces theory developed by Caffarelli and Ovidio Savin. Okay. Okay, let me, this is exactly what I told you. Uh, and, okay. So this is the, this is the part of the talk related with the uh, free boundary regularity. Once, when I was studying this problem with Ray Young, we proved the monotonicity formula, and then Feng Hualin told us that with the monotonicity formula, we would get the C1 alpha regularity of the free boundary. We get just, we got just a Lipschitz regularity of the free boundary, and we are still working on the C1 alpha regularity. But then we decided to try to use the monotonicity formula to study partial regularity results for some geometric equations also. And it turns out that the monotonicity formula is exactly the same, and we can apply this to study an equation that is related with the fractional Yamaha problem. And the equation is, and this is also related with what people call PACAR regularity criterion, okay? Let me talk a little bit about the Packard regularity criterion first. Let us consider this standard elliptic equation, okay? You have minus Laplacian of u equals to u to the power alpha. Of course, here I want to, to study the case when alpha is bigger than the critical ex exponent. And Packard regularity result says that this exponent here is in some sense critical 
to the regularity of, for the regularity of the solution nu, u for this equation. Exactly the result is that if you, if you have a positive solution of this equation, well, if you have a positive solution of this equation here, then u belongs to this L alpha p space, when now, where alpha, L alpha p space is the Campanotti space, okay? And on the other hand, if you have that u belongs to the Campanotti space with exponent q, with q is strictly bigger than p, then u is regular, okay? This exponent here is critical in this sense. If you have that u belongs to this space for some exponent bigger than this one, then u is regular. And if it belongs to this space, then if u is a weak solution, then u belongs to this space. Okay, what we want is to study this kind of result for the fractional Laplacian here. Okay, and this is important because there is a paper by Maria Del Mar Gonzalez and Alice Sheng that relates the fractional Laplacian with some results in conformal geometry. And actually, with this paper, it was able to, Maria Del Mar Gonzalez and Je King, Je Ching, to study the fractional version of the Yamab problem. And if you have the fractional version of the Yamab problem, then you can consider the singular fractional Yamab problem. And when we started to study this equation, we was interested in the singular version of the fractional Yamab problem. And we, okay, let's consider also the case when you have just one half here. The other cases are, you can do the, the same results, but you can prove the same results, but it is more involved. And the formula is also more involved. Uh, okay, there is a kind of, uh, th th there is a, just a small problem in the definition of the fractional Laplacian here, because I'm working with a bounded domain, but this is, was done by Cabré and Tan, and then we, and the, Extension result by Caffarelli and Sylvester is the same one as this proved in Cabret and Tan. So, uh, okay, let's just say that a weak solution for me is a function that is in L alpha log and satisfies the equation in this sense. And once you have a weak solution, a weak formulation for this equation, then we have proved the following generalization of the Packard regularity criterion. If u is a positive weak solution of two, then u belongs to L alpha lambda for lambda equals to this exponent here. And if you see in this, actually the general result is, equal, is p equals to n minus two so for instance, if you have minus Laplacian to the power gamma, then this, is, this p is equals to n minus two gamma alpha over alpha minus one. This is the case when gamma is equals to one half. So you have lambda equals to n minus alpha over alpha minus one. And if you have that u belongs to this, to this <coughs> Campanati space for this key, for this a key, actually here, key, is bigger than lambda, okay, then u is regular. This is exactly the same result as Packard regularity criterion for the fractional Laplacian. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about the, the, the proof. Okay, the proof is when once, for the, for the point that you have the, for the regularity result, I mean, if you want to prove that u belongs to this space, you just need to find some nice test functions and then multiply the equation for, use this, this test function in this formulation here. Actually, not this formulation, but on, this, on the extension result, using the extension result. Then you obtain a nice estimate for u, and then you see that 
U belongs to this Campanati space here with the, exactly this lambda. On the other hand, if you, want, if you have that U belongs to this space, then you can is, use some computations related with the talk by Professor Giuseppe Mingioni and prove that U is regular. You can compute here the, his operator applied to U, and then you get some nice estimates, and then you see that U is regular. This is also related with some computation done by Brizis in, I think that it's in the beginning of 19. Okay. okay. But so I have this partial regularity, this regularity criterion, and I want to use this criterion here to study the partial regularity of U. And to start with, I'm going to write the functional, which is related to, with the fractional. Okay. Using the extension result, you can see that to study the fractional version of the minus Laplace and equals to one half, equal, equals to u to the power alpha, is equivalent to study minimizers of this functional here. Okay. To study, here I'm using the extension result by Cabré and Tan. And once you have this functional here, you can, okay, you have a variation of formulation for the problem, but I would like to study not the minimizers of this functional, but some kind of minimizer that we call stationary solutions which is related with the uh, domain variations of this functional here, okay? You study the minimizers for this, fun for, the for this functional here related with domain variation. This is related with the work by Evans for regularity theory for harmonic maps. And this was done also by Pakar. Uh, and once you have domain variations, you can define minimizers for these domain variations, for this functional, and we call these minimizers uh, stationary solutions, okay? And once you have stationary solutions, then you can use the regularity criterion together with a monotonicity formula, which is exactly the same as the, the one that I put for the free boundary problem. And once you have monotonicity and regularity criterion, you can prove the following. That if U is a positive stationary solution of the problem, then, and if you have alpha in this interval here, then you can compute the Hausdorff dimension of the singular set of U, and this is less than this number here. Okay. So, once you have regularity criterion and monotonicity formula, and if you take a positive stationary solution of the problem, which is just a special kind of minimizers, then you see that the Hausdorff dimension, okay, you can, you can see that the singular set of U has, you can, you can estimate the Hausdorff dimension of the singular set of U. Okay. Uh, this is, okay, this is something that I'm not going to prove here, but it is very, okay, there is a lot of computations, okay. But essentially what you use is the, is you, you try to divide the, you divide the set where U is singular and where U is regular, then you use the monotonistic formula to estimate the norm of U in the Campanati space, and then you prove that the Hausdorff dimension of the set where U is singular needs to have this kind of measure that, that has this kind of dimension here, okay? Uh, let me just talk some, some comments. 
uh, as I told, this problem is related with the fractional singular Yamab problem. This was studied by Gonzalez, Mazel, and Sir, Yannick Sir. And Gonzalez and Jie Ching proved the existence for the Yamab problem for the fractional Laplacian. And here they consider the singular Yamab problem, okay? Okay. It's also, I think that it's also interesting to say that in the standard problem with the Laplacian, one can also measure the set where the solution U is singular in a certain, in a sense of uh, capacity, okay? In a capacitary sense. Okay, this is also the case here for the fractional setting. You can prove that <laughs> the capacity, there is a capacity associated with the problem with the fractional Laplacian, and it is possible to prove that if the set where, okay, it's possible to prove that the set where U is singular is thin in a capacitary sense, okay? And this is a work in progress with Maria Del Mar Gonzalez also from Barcelona. And okay, I think that's just this 